What, what I'm trying to uh, develop are cancer vaccines um, and for, for cancer prevention. Uh, the cancer vaccines uh, are being tested right now in the setting of cancer for people who are diagnosed with cancer, people who uh, perhaps had surgery, had the cancer removed, and then there's a potential of cancer recurrence, so we're trying to use the vaccines to prevent cancer recurrence. Uh, however, um, once a person has cancer, there is a tremendous um, suppression of the immune system by the disease. And the fact that the cancer is diagnosed in an individual usually means that the defense mechanisms, our own immune system, has in fact not managed to control cancer, and the cancer has escaped. So we are trying to introduce a vaccine uh, earlier to prepare the immune system to see the cancer, just like we pre prepare it to see chickenpox, measles, etc., um, polio. Um, in that way, uh, perhaps when the first few cells begin to grow as cancer, right. the immune system will destroy them before they have a chance to, to grow big enough to be diagnosed and, and to escape the immune system. So um, in order to uh, be able to do that, as you know, uh, there are vaccines that prevent infections with viruses that cause cancer, but those vaccines are uh, against the viral infection. Uh, with cancer that is not caused by a virus, we have to look for targets for molecules on cancer that we can uh, vaccinate with, prepare the immune system to see them on the cancer and to destroy the cancer cells. So we spent a lot of time early on as a, as a community and myself as in my lab especially to, uh, to find those molecules on cancer cells. And we found quite a few. And the surprise was that these molecules that we thought were tumor-specific molecules. In fact, the molecules that mark not only a tumor, but every time a cell is sick for a particular reason, either it's infected with a virus or it's infected with a bacterium, or there's an inflammation, the, the sick cells send these messages to the immune system in the form of these molecules, and the immune system gets alerted, comes and destroys a sick cell. Without, sometimes, questioning even why the cell is sick. It's just important to get rid of that cell. So we focused on those molecules because they appear to be the choice of our immune system uh, to keep us healthy. So the immune system likes to see those molecules so that can, they can get rid of the sick cells. So we decided that those would be very good molecules and now based on these molecules we are creating vaccines and we are vaccinating people both uh, to induce responses against these molecules in people who haven't had too many exposures to sick cells in their own bodies, maybe, you know, uh, as well as to boost these responses in people who have already encountered these antigens, these molecules, but maybe their responses are low or maybe it's been a while, so it's like a booster shot. And, and uh, in that way, we prepare the immune system to eliminate the beginning of cancer. So it's important, very important, to know whether or not it's possible to do that. And so we are testing, in animal models, it's possible. But in people, we are trying to find just the right setting in which we can test these. So it isn't, doesn't take 25 years to know uh, whether people are protected from cancer. So we have chosen pre-malignant, pre-cancer uh, disease. For example, uh, one, one setting we work in is the colon cancer development. So as you know, one of the best prevention, preventive measures for colon cancer is colonoscopy after the age of 50. And then if there's a polyp, if they remove the polyp, basically they remove the cancer, the potential cancer. Um, so what we now, but there are people who, when they go for colonoscopy, already have a very advanced polyp. And the polyp is removed, but now they are at a very high risk of developing cancer. 50% of those people will get another very bad polyp within one to three years uh, from the last one. So they have to continuously go for colonoscopies. So we decided that that's a very good population to test the, the prophylactic, the, the preventive cancer vaccine. So when a person is diagnosed with an advanced polyp, the polyp is removed, we vaccinate them. And now at three years, we try to see whether those people who have gotten the vaccine have 
no recurrence or very few recurrences compared to people who don't get the vaccine who would have expected 50% recurrence rate. So we're in the middle of this trial and if in fact uh, we show that we have a success in preventing recurrence of the polyp which would also prevent uh, colon cancer, because if you don't catch the polyp in one to three years, the next time you look, it's colon cancer, and then it's, very, it's too late. Uh, if that is the case, then we actually can use this vaccine even before the, the, the colonoscopy in people who have a familial risk, you know, you have relatives with colon cancer, you can get a vaccine instead of constantly going for colonoscopies. This is very good for the patient, for the society in general. The cost is very low of a vaccine compared to repeated colonoscopies. And, and now, so this is going on, uh, and we're very hopeful because a vaccine is a, is a solution to the world's problems. <laughs> and so many diseases, why not cancer? And, uh, and we are now looking for additional settings uh, where we can apply the prophylactic vaccine and in a very short amount of time know whether it's working or not. For example, in uh, last year in the United States, 500,000 people were diagnosed with cysts in the pancreas, pancreatic cysts, by accident because they went to, to have a, a, a imaging of the stomach because they had stomach problems, the gallbladder had the gallbladder problems. And by accident, they see the pancreas on the scan and there is a hole in the pancreas. It's known that these cysts are precursors to pancreatic cancer. People who have pancreatic cancer, it is a very bad diagnosis. So, so since now 500,000 people get identified with these pre-malignant lesions for pancreatic cancer, all of a sudden we have 500,000 patients who could potentially develop pancreatic cancer, but you don't know who will and who will not. And now uh, what happens is that since of this, this wonderful, you know, imaging technology, we now gain patients that we now have to screen constantly. Uh, people who have very large cysts get the whole pancreas removed. So now you remove the, the, the danger of pancreatic cancer, but you create a diabetic because the pancreas is gone. So that's not a very good treatment. So what we're trying to do now is, in fact, vaccinate, try it, run a clinical trial to vaccinate these people, at least a small number of them, and see if by vaccination we could not teach the immune system to go into the pancreas and, and repair the cyst, because the cyst is abnormal and, uh, and it has all these abnormal molecules of sick cells. In the cyst, they're sick cells. So we're trying to, to see if vaccinating people, we can then just image them a few times and see that the cysts will slowly disappear and we will recover the normal function of the pancreas. We're very excited about that. Uh, and it's exactly the same vaccine, by the way, as the one for colon cancer, because these, these molecules that we are using are expressed on about 80% of all human tumors. And then on, you know, because they all derive from the epithelial cell, uh, uh, breast, pancreas, colon, lung, prostate, all the big ones. Um, so so that's, that's what we're trying to do, trying to control very early these very big, big cancers. So that